to Manchester Docks, once Britain's third largest port and only inland seaport, linking Manchester with the rest of the world. The port consisted of eight docks, four smaller ones in Pomona and four big ones in Salford. The Manchester Ship Canal linked the docks with the Irish Sea in Liverpool, with the Irwell River supplying water into the docks. Early 19th century Manchester was experiencing growing pains. The city was nicknamed Cottonopolis due to the sheer amount of cotton that was being processed there. Trade in and out of the city was difficult. Both the Bridgewater Canal and the Irwell and Mersey navigation were narrow and difficult to navigate, and the Liverpool and Manchester Railway was expensive to use. So the most logical solution, of course, was to build a whopping great ship canal, 36 miles long, 35 metres wide and 8.5 metres deep, big enough for huge seagoing ships. The Manchester Ship Canal opened in 1894, along with a huge new set of docks called the Manchester Docks, or today known as Salford Keys. The docks also helped to stimulate the growth of Trafford Park, the world's first purpose-built industrial estate just south of the docks. The land that is today Trafford Park was once a deer park like Dunham Massey, owned by the De Trafford family, from which the borough of Trafford gets its name. They sold the estate in 1896. Trafford Park is also important to the grain industry, with factories owned by Warburtons, Ovis and Kellogg's, which are still in use today. Other factories in Trafford Park, such as the Ford factory, which opened in 1911, and at its peak was producing 26,000 cars per year, have since closed. Between 1911 and 1918, Trafford Park even had its own aerodrome. The docks were also having their golden age at about this time. During the Second World War, the docks played a crucial role in keeping Britain moving, whilst other major ports, such as Hull, were bombed. After the Second World War, however, its use began to decline. The biggest factor in the demise of the docks was the rise of containerisation. Ships were becoming bigger and could no longer fit down the ship canal. The freight they carried was now in neat little boxes which could easily be transferred onto a truck or a train, meaning the docks no longer needed to be right near where the product was being delivered. The final nail in the coffin for the Manchester docks was the opening of the Royal Seaforth dock in Liverpool in 1972. Ten years later, in 1982, the Manchester docks were permanently closed causing approximately 3,000 job losses. Salford Council were left with an enormous brownfield site to redevelop. Their first job was to clean up the water, and it was filthy. Salford Council aimed to turn the dialect old docks into a new, vibrant and pleasant centre, a process known as regeneration. Salford Keys, as the area is now known, is now a mixed economic, leisure and residential centre. The first new tenants of the regenerated Salford Keys were the Copthorne Hotel and a cinema that has since been demolished. A lot of the land actually became new houses. Imagine living there. Salford Keys is also home to many offices, a water sports centre, the Lowry Complex containing a shopping centre, cinema, theatre and art museum, the Imperial War Museum for the North, and Media City UK, home to the BBC, and ITV. Crucial to the regeneration of Salford Keys was the opening of the Metrolink Eccles line between 1999 and 2000, providing a fast and direct link to Manchester city centre. The Media City UK spur was opened in 2010. One of the Manchester Dock's major trade export destinations was Canada hence the reason for a lot of Canadian names making their way into the newly regenerated Salford Keys. Such as Ontario Basin, Vancouver Key and Winnipeg Key. The smaller Pomona Keys, upstream towards Manchester, were never redeveloped. And the area around is still desolate and empty. But this may change as there are planned developments around Cornbrook Metrolink stop which may encompass the old Pomona docks. Trafford Park, meanwhile, is now a major centre for logistics and distribution. West of Trafford Park is the Trafford Centre, which opened in 1998 and is the UK's largest shopping centre. A new Metrolink line is now being built to link the Trafford Centre and Trafford Park with Manchester City Centre, but we'll save that for another video. 
there are many interesting things around these areas which showcase their rich history. Starting with this, a sculpture known as Skyhooks. Where Trafford Road crosses the canal. Just near Salford Keys Metrolink, you may have walked past this strange little bit of track just kind of buried into the pavement. It once stretched along the entire waterfront here and allowed three cranes to be moved from side to side. The cranes were actually left here after the regeneration as a reminder of the docks past, though were sadly dismantled in 2013 as they became a hazard. Across the canal is this wonderful sculpture, an homage to the area's past known as Silent Cargo. The iconic archway wants the main entrance to the docks and the former dock office behind it. Both Manchester Docks and Trafford Park had large extensive internal rail systems. On Google Earth you can see this little junction here, which connected the Liverpool and Manchester Railway to the docks internal system. The junction is still in place today and now serves a smaller dock near Eccles. This railway map from 1911 also shows where the railway connected to what is now Salford Crescent Station, though no trace of this line remains today. Though little trace of the tracks remain in Salford Quays due to rebuilding, many can still be seen along roads in Trafford Park, such as here, and here, are Most of these lines closed after the opening of the new Trafford Park Euro Terminal in 1993. Martin Dock Freight Terminal, just east of the Trafford Centre, continued to use rail freight for a while longer. The line through here at Kellogg's Roundabout was still in use by occasional Class 09 freight workings well into the noughties, with the last services ending in about 2012. Most of the track is still in place, it is now overgrown and abandoned. This bridge carried the Barton Dock Freight Branch over the Bridgewater, and now it's all abandoned. Spooky. That's actually a mistake. As you can see from this map here, that bridge did not carry the Barton Dock Branch, it carried the rail entrance into the former Trafford Park Railway, which has been closed for a lot longer. Which makes sense because the track across that bridge looks like it has been closed for a lot longer than six years. Northbound traffic across the canal uses this original and beautiful bridge. At one point, the railway also crossed the canal here over a similar bridge. When the docks closed, the railways closed and the bridge was moved all the way over here at Dock 9, where it blends beautifully into the regenerated landscape and allows pedestrians to cross the quay. And so our journey through what was a major part of the great city of Manchester's history comes to an end. What was once the trade portal of the city has now become a cultural and media landmark, showing how old industrial areas can be renewed, regenerated and repurposed. Thank you for watching and